Okay, can you hear me? And both stereo. Okay, so queso. Cheese. Um, I'm gonna put it at first a little far further back to see if that makes a difference. Maybe I can pick up something better. I'm not gonna jam it right in the hole, so I'm getting that <clears throat> that sound, the uh, the bass that I'm looking for. Okay. So, and this is a great sounding guitar, so, and you said, do, you know, tell us why you're Randy Rose. It's simple. That was the first professional guitar, great guitar that he had. That's, he had a black SG that just wouldn't stay in tune. He sold it to the guitar player in the Dickies, punk band. And he had it for years until it got ripped off. And his brother is Don Sobel, or Ron Sobel. The guy that's been taking all these pictures and put out that Quiet Riot thing because he did all the sh photo shoot for the second album. He was friends with Kevin. Not Randy, but he was friends with Randy too. But mainly Kevin introduced him to, you know, Randy was a Burbank guy. Kevin was a Valley guy. Drew, I think, was Burbank, yes. And uh, so it was Kelly. Kelly drew Kelly Garney. Drew Forsyth and Randy all grew up around here. Kevin Dubrow was a valley guy. Big difference. So anyways, other than that, let's try this right now to see what it sounds like. Shut up! <laughs>
like in like I usually is now. So now it's a normal sound. <laughs> took it seeing quite right they just gave him a 74 he didn't do anything the only thing he did the guy that does my tech he did randy's guitar work too check it out i'm telling the truth that's why i get my stuff done by him uh rich so he this was potted to, so it wasn't wouldn't feed back you know potting paraffin wax dipping and then the pickup in there so and no feedback, see? That's on full bore. It's controlled feedback. And that's why you see Randy doing this a lot. Because he's running that distortion plus through too. So this is a way to control the feedback. See, simple, simple tricks for simple dicks. Now, listen. His guitar was just good because he liked it and he played the hell out of it a lot. So it became his favorite guitar, just like my star was. I picked that thing up and I could just play it with my eyes closed. I knew every inch of that guitar. If I played it for a couple of days, I'd be right back to that guitar. But because his was better than others, <clears throat> when he got big, Gibson took it from him and put on brass hardware brass don't remember if that's brass these were not brass they were going to put these brass but he didn't want it he wanted that kept the same they put brass on the back 
and that makes a huge tonal difference in sustain and a little brighter. Not that he needed it to be brighter, but he already had this pickup was was uh, not switched out. It was just uh, I think Seymour had looked at it too, and he might have done something to it. I'm not sure. I don't think he let anybody but Gibson and his tech touch this. Touch his. This is mine. This is my Randy Rhodes copy. Uh, Randy Rhodes replica of his, you know. It's not a 74 Gibson. It looks exactly like it. Oh, it. I could go on and on, but I'm not going to. So that's the two mics in four different positions, three settings. You tell me which is best. The first, the second, the third, the fourth. Tell me when you thought it sounded best. Tell me, tell me! I'm talking to everybody, especially the guy that just emailed me last night. I, I trust your word because I know you you like what I like. No, I can't deal with him right now. All right, so there you go. Again, not this, but comment, do something, comment. You got to comment, dude, all right? Lates, this is the best besides Randy's out there.